Guys, it's Fonzie with DipYourCar.com. The process of dipping your car has been around for quite a while now. We started this back in, I don't know, 2011, so it's been over three years now, and believe me, the process has evolved a lot. Today in this video, what I'm going to show you is I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of dipping your car, from what comes in the Pro Car Kit and how to use all those materials to washing the car, prepping the car, masking the car, spraying the car with different types of materials, breaking the car down, and then aftercare as well. We're gonna take you through the entire process, everything you need to know from A to Z. If you're looking for a quick, entertaining video, this is not it. This is gonna be long, it's gonna be thorough, and we're gonna make sure we cover everything. So, how to dip your whole car, the complete guide. Enjoy the video. Now the car we're going to be using for this video process is the DYC Mustang. It's completely peeled OEM stock paint exactly the way it would be if you're working with your car that's not dipped at all right now. The first thing we're going to do to the car is we're going to give it a nice thorough washing. We want to get all the oil, dirt, grease, contaminants, wax, anything that's on the car, we want to get it off completely. So what you're going to see me use is the DYC dip foam system. It hooks up to a power washer. It bathes the entire car in foam, all the nooks and crannies. And I'm going to use a soft bristle brush and I'm going to really scrub the entire car down. Now this material and the, this equipment works excellent to get the job done. It's of course not the only way to get it done. So one thing you want to do is use a nice clean car wash, not doesn't have any wax in it, just a nice simple car wash. You want to scrub the car really well. So let's go outside and get that done right now. All right, guys, the car is completely clean and scrubbed down. You want to make sure that you get soap and get that brush or whatever you're using in every inch of the car. We want to make sure it's perfectly clean and ready to bond with the Plasti Dip. Now, this is one of the most important things I can tell you. We suggest this to all of our customers. Wash your car the day before you do your dip job. Water is the biggest enemy of dip. If there is water or moisture in any part of this car, the dip could not bond in that area. It can curl up, it can bubble, it can lift. So we wanna just wash the car today and then we're gonna let it dry overnight and then we're gonna come back tomorrow and start masking, start prepping, and we're gonna dip our car tomorrow. So always keep that in mind. Wash your car the day before you dip so it has plenty of time to be bone dry. In the meantime, let me walk you through everything you get in the DYC Pro Car Kit. While the car is drying, what I'm going to do is walk you through all of the materials that I have here. Now, the majority of the materials here come in the Pro Car Kit. They're all accessories that come in your Pro Car Kit. And then we have a couple extra goodies that we've added on to this Pro Car Kit as well. Everything you see here is materials and equipment that I'm going to be personally using on this dip job. So what I want to do is walk you through everything so you know exactly what to expect and what everything's purpose is. Now, first and foremost, of course, we have the DYC dip sprayer. This is the dip spraying system that we're going to use to apply the Plasti Dip, the pearls, and the gloss to our car. The dip job that we're doing today is we're doing it on a 2014 Mustang GT, and we're going to be doing Iguana Green Dip Pearl over an Electric Lime Green Plasti Dip base. I'm going to walk you through a couple uh, do's and don'ts and, and some techniques on this system a little bit later in the video as far as you know, where to have the gun set on, how to fill up the paint cup, and some other tips and tricks there. We've got a bottle of dip coat. This is very, very important. You always wanna have dip coat on hand at all times when your car is dipped. This is gonna play a very big role in the aftercare once your dip job is completed. We have pre-dip spray. This is what we're going to use along with a microfiber towel during our cleaning and prepping portion of the car. This is gonna make sure there's no contaminants, no fingerprints, oil, dirt, anything left on the car so that it's ready to be sprayed. This is gonna definitely play a very big role. 
We've got tape and drape here. This is added onto our pro car kit. It's essentially large sheets of plastic with some uh, tape attached to it. This is going to play a huge role in our masking section. It's going to help us cover large surface areas like the windows, the windshield, stuff like that, without having to use too much tape. Tape and drape saves a lot of time and a lot of material. We've got our coatings here. We've got three gallons of electric lime green Plasti Dip spray. This is going to give us our foundation and our color base for the car. If you're just doing a matte color on your car, you're probably only going to have your Plasti Dip spray gallons. But on this car, we're doing our matte color as our foundation, we're doing a pearl coating, and then we're doing high gloss on top. The pearl coating and the high gloss is where the dip pearl high gloss top coat comes in. We got three gallons here of that. A gallon and a half is probably going to be used for our pearl coats, and then the other gallon and a half is going to be used for our high gloss top coats at the end. Now, we've got 150 grams here of iguana green dip pearl. If you're using pearls on your car, you may have a different type of pearl. You want to use essentially about 50 grams of solid pearls per gallon, or up to 75 grams of color shifting pearls per gallon. Basically, when you're ready to do your project, if you don't know how many pearls or how much pearl you want to use for your project, you can always call customer service and they'll tell you exactly what you need. And I'm also going to show you a little bit of a trick um, and involved mixing the dip pearls into the last coat or two of their color base to make sure you get no contrasting between the pearls and the pearl top coat. And I'll walk you through all that stuff as we go. We got a respirator here. You can get a respirator on dipyourcar.com or any local hardware store. I really don't care where you get a respirator, but make sure you use one when dipping your car at all times. You've got a uh, mixer here, a blending wand that we're going to attach to our drill. This comes in the DYC dip sprayer system. We're going to use that to make sure all of our dip and our pearls and everything are blended up really well before we spray. Then you've got your Pro Car Kit accessory bag. Inside of that, mixing stick for obvious purposes. We've got a microfiber towel. We're going to use this along with the pre-dip spray to make sure we perfectly clean the entire car. Very uh, handy tool, but again, any microfiber towel will work, but you get one in the Pro Car Kit. Cone filters. We're going to use the cone filters whenever pouring our Plasti Dip spray directly into the cup of the spray system to make sure there aren't any contaminants or debris that get in there. We've got our dip guard, or this again plays a big role in the aftercare once your car is dipped. I'll walk you through that in the aftercare section. A couple DYC videos or uh, decals so you can represent dip your car when your project is complete. We've got some very special low tack uh, blue painters tape that always comes in the pro car kit accessory bag as well. This is obviously going to uh, play a big role during the masking section of our project. Finally, uh, in your accessory bag, you've got the dip washer. This is a rubberized cloth. This is going to work extremely well when you're hand washing your dipped car. It slides over really well, nice and smooth on a dipped surface, makes it super easy to hand wash. So that is all of the materials that I'm going to be using today on my project. You may have all of these in front of you right now. You may have uh, some of them. You may even have more, but I want to make sure that you know the basics. So now that we've got that, we're going to jump in right now and let's go over the masking and the prepping section of the video because that's going to play a very big role in the outcome of our project. All right, guys, now we're going to start our masking part of the project and we're going to do our masking first and then our prepping. The reason why is our prepping is essentially using the pre-dip spray and the microfiber towel and making sure the car is perfectly surgically clean before we start spraying. If we do the prepping first and then we do our masking, we're going to have fingerprints and smudges all over the car. So get the masking out of the way first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through each section of the car. We'll start at the front, then we'll go to the sides, and I'll walk you through some of the examples of, of what we have to work with, how we planning a, uh, plan on attacking that, and then the end result. Not everything that's on this car is going to pertain to the vehicle that you're doing, but I'm sure a lot of it will translate and you'll get the idea. So first and foremost, we have this front grill section here. Now, on this particular car, this grill section pulls right out. You've got these plastic tabs. If you're a do-it-yourself, if you're the type of person who knows your car and you know how to pull stuff out, anything that you can remove, you should remove. Think about it. It's a lot easier to mask this wide open gapping area than it would be 
to make sure that we tape surgically around this line all the way around the grill. So on your car, if you know how to remove plastic trim and things like that, I suggest that you do it. It'll make the masking easier. However, I'm not suggesting that you go in there and start yanking on stuff and breaking clips off. So if you don't know how to remove stuff on your car, just take the extra time to do the masking. It's a safer way to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some tape and possibly some tape and drape, and we're going to mask this entire intersection off here. Now, for something like headlights and taillights, a very, very long time ago, we weren't masking off headlights and taillights. We would just spray over them. But as everything has continued to evolve, we want to make sure that we save product. And we also know that there are some headlights and taillights out there that don't like the solvents in plastic. So we want to make sure that we don't, uh, we want to play it safe, put it that way. So what we're going to do for headlights and taillights is simply just utilize our blue masking tape. We're going to go around, we're going to mask off all of the lenses of our headlights and taillights. Now, one thing that I didn't show you in the accessories part of the video is we also have on dipyourcar.com yellow automotive masking tape. It's cheap, it's like three or four bucks. I definitely suggest grabbing some of this because the blue painter's tape will cover a lot of surface area. But for edge work and things that need to stay down and stay crisp with really sharp lines, nothing's gonna beat this yellow automotive masking tape. So what you're gonna see us doing is using this on all different parts of the car to make sure we have sharp lines. So for our headlights and taillights, we're gonna be using the blue painter's tape. Any plastic trim that you have on the car there's something that you have to look for, and this is very, very important. As you mask off plastic trim and headlights, for example, so let's take a look at these headlights. There's a big gap between the edge of the headlight lens and the body of the car. That gap is going to allow a break in the plastic dip so that when a car is completely dry, we can remove the painter's tape. And we don't have to worry about any bridging or any tearing at that point. However, if there's plastic trim on your car that's very close or touching the bumper or any part of the body of the car, you're gonna mask that off right along that line and then use your smartphone, use a pad and a pen. You have to make a list of all of the peel when wet sections of the car. And what I mean by that is if you have the body of the car and then you have the tape going up against the body of the car, you're gonna spray all your heavy coats of plastic dip over that and that can bridge over that line and then dry there. On the last coat, what you're gonna do, while the last coat's still wet, and we'll walk you through this as we go through the project, you're gonna peel away all the masking tape that's peel when wet on your list, so that while the dip is still wet, you can remove that and then create a nice clean line. If you wait for it to dry, what's gonna happen is you're gonna peel that masking tape away and you're gonna break or tear that edge and you're not gonna have your clean line. Again. We'll go over handling and executing the breakdown of the car when we're done with our last coat in the video. But you have to make a list and keep in mind because on that last coat, you want to know how to attack it. You have to know whether you're by yourself or with some people. All right, this is our last coat on the front, on the side. Here are the peel when wet areas so you can go in there and carefully remove that stuff while the dip is still dry. So we're going to jump in. We're going to mask off the front of the car now. And let me show you what we did. Now for the windows, what Gabe's going to do, Gabe is our shop manager here, he's going to be utilizing the tape and drape and running the tape and drape up along the top edge of the window trim, then pulling it down and utilizing that yellow automotive masking tape to make sure that we have a nice clean masking line all the way around. Now we've got the tape and drape and the plastic covering the entire side window area and encompassing the side mirror as well. He's going in now with that yellow automotive tape and he's going to be just doing some fine tuning to make sure that the edge of the window trim is covered with a nice, sharp, clean line. Now when it comes to masking your wheels and tires off, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Some really clean, some not so clean. One of the best and cleanest ways you can do it is using canvas wheel masking bags. You can get these, of course, at dipyourcar.com. They've got some nice wire in it to keep the shape. And all you do is you slip this right over the wheel and the tire. It sits nice and snug, and now it's completely protected from overspray. All right, folks, we're all done with our masking process now. So I'm gonna walk you around the car and show you how we attacked everything. The front of the car here, we got our headlights, 
and our front grills all masked off in this large gaping area here we've utilized tape and drape and then the headlights we've got blue painters tape and anything that you see the yellow tape going around the edges that's where we really want to have a little bit of extra hold and some real sharp lines some extra strength or flexibility and that's when we utilize that yellow tape now take this area here for example this area here you've got this area that we want to mask and that's touching basically the body of the car so this area here this area right here going down the bottom these are all on our peel when wet list we've got all that stuff written down coming along the side of the car we've got our canvas wheel masking bags protecting the wheels and tires we've got our side windows here all masked again yellow tape along these edge lines here just to make sure it's nice and crisp we've got our roof exposed here small windows covered simply with blue painters tape around the back same thing nice and simple blue painters tape to cover the large surface areas and then a little bit of the yellow right around the edges to make sure we get the nice sharp lines and strong holds we've got you always want to remember to mask off your exhaust tips and mufflers make sure you don't get any overspray on that we've got our antenna here we've got tape and drape on any large surfaces like our rear windshield here and front windshield same on this side so now that we've got everything masked off and protected it's time to wipe down and prep the car. Okay, we're on day two of the project now. Yesterday, we got the entire car washed. We got the whole thing masked off. We let it dry overnight indoors, so the entire car is bone dry on every inch, and that's what you have to have. You can't have any moisture or any water in any of the cracks or surface area of the car. The last step before we start spraying is we want to prep the car, make sure there's no contaminants, no fingerprints, no oil, no wax, nothing on the surface of the car. Now the way we're going to attack this is we've got our pre-dip spray and we've got our microfiber towel from the Pro Car Kit. We're going to focus on one panel at a time. That way we're going to be able to keep track and cover every square inch of the car. Again, one panel at a time. What I'll do first is I'm going to focus on the hood. I'm going to spray the pre-dip spray directly onto the microfiber towel, not onto the car because we don't want to oversaturate any of the cracks or anything with moisture and not be able to get that out. And what I'm going to do is focus on the edges first and then I'm going to work my way inside and believe me, you want to take your time. What we usually do is pre-dip the entire car and then because we have the time and we take this very seriously, we go back and pre-dip the car one more time just to make sure we didn't miss any spots if you miss one spot and that spot has wax on it oil anything like that that spot could cause problems as far as when the product is trying to bond with the car prep can make or break your project so take your time use your pre-dip in your microfiber focus on one panel and cover every square inch of the car i'm gonna work my way around the car right now now when you're pre-dipping the car, you want to pay really close attention to areas like this. This is an emblem that's on the car. There's some very small surface areas between the five and inside the zero. You can't just run a towel on top of that. You're not going to get your pre-dip and be able to clean inside those little cracks and stuff. So what I like to do, is spray a little bit of pre-dip on, on your towel and grab a little plastic tool or something and then just kind of work that towel inside each one of the letters and numbers all the emblems and stuff on your car believe me it really matters you don't want to spend your money spend your time and energy on a dip project and have an area on the car either lift or bubble or not bond properly because you didn't take the time to prep it so really pay attention and get the car prepped correctly now the car is ready to spray i'm going to show you how to set up your dip sprayer system so that we can get the dip into the gun and we can start shooting the car. So you got your dip sprayer system inside the paint cup. You're gonna notice you got your pickup tube here. The pickup tube is gonna slide directly over the small hole on the underside of the gun. You want the pickup tube to face forward so that when you're aiming your gun down, it's gonna pick up plenty of product in the, forward, the front of the cup. Now you got your paint cup here as well. One of the most important things that you can do when you're preparing the Plasti Dip is you have to blend it properly. This is a pigmented product a lot of the times the pigment's gonna settle at the bottom of the gallon. You wanna pop open the gallon, 
we've got our uh, blending wand here attached to our drill. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this directly onto the bottom of the gallon and we're going to start to slowly blend this up. Now a lot of times you'll notice that when you open up one of these PDS gallons it has a little bit of a translucent look at the top and then as you start to blend all the pigments come up from the bottom and it gets a nice opaque color. So we've got this first gallon blended up and ready to go. We're going to take our paint cup and our cone filter. You always want to use the cone filter whenever you're pouring in PDS. Put that right on top of the paint cup and fill it up. It's a 48 ounce paint cup and you just want to fill it to the 48 ounce mark. Don't fill it all the way up to the top. The 48 ounce mark is as far up as you want to go. That way you can avoid uh, the, the dip going in the wrong places in the gun. You want to make sure that the gasket underneath here is pushed in all the way. It's got a nice tight seal in it. Remove your cone filter. Screw on the top of the dip sprayer system nice and snug. And now you're ready to go. You want to plug in your DYC turbine as far away from the car as you possibly can. And remember, a closed environment like a closed garage is not an appropriate place to spray your car. You want to have some moving air, some fresh moving air. You don't want that overspray just hovering on top of you. So make sure you have proper ventilation when you do the project as well. Now let me show you how to set the gun dial and how you want to be spraying the car. All right, we've got our gun hooked up to our turbine here. Now, as far as where you want your dial to be set on the gun, there's no set magical place or setting for your dial to be set. I don't pay attention to this when I set my gun. What I do is I turn the gun on, I spray a wall, I spray some cardboard, some, some test surface, and I try to get myself about a six to seven inch spray fan. That's how I uh, set this dial. So what I'll do is I'll turn it on, And I'll dial it up or down to get myself just about a six or a seven inch spray fan and that's when I know I'm ready to go. So what I'm going to do while I'm spraying my Plastidip spray coats, and this is going to change a little bit when we're doing our high gloss later on, but for my Plastidip spray coats I'm going to move nice and swiftly and I'm just going to focus on doing 50% overlaps. That means if this is my spray fan right now, my next coat should overlap by 50%. And then my next coat by 50%. My next coat by 50%. That's what I'm going to be focusing on when I'm spraying my Plasti Dip spray. It's going to look a little bit like this. Now that's just your first coat. Don't expect to get full color coverage on your first coat. We don't want to put too much because once you get a run, there's really no going back from that. So we're just going to put our first coat on, let it dry completely, and then move on. So let's take this technique and apply it to the car. All right, guys, we got the gun dialed in. We got it filled up with PDS. We got the car prepped and we're ready to start spraying. Now here's how we're going to attack the car. We're spraying the roof on this car. If you're not spraying the roof on your car, you can simply go panel by panel around the car and get it done. When we're using our Plasti Dip spray, we are going to be spraying panel to panel. You'll see when we go into the pearls or even the gloss, we'll be walking the length of the car. We'll cover that a little bit later in the video. When you're spraying your roof, you always want to start on your roof and work your way down. Now there's a technique to spraying the roof and making sure you get it done properly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this edge. I'm going to do my 50-50 passes across the roof until I can't reach anymore right about in the middle. Then I'm going to walk around to the other side of the roof. I'm going to take that wet edge and I'm going to continue it back across to the other side. There's one very important thing to keep in mind. When I'm here in the middle, I can't be angled down like this, especially when I switch over to the other side because I'm going to be shooting over spray over where I've been spraying and I'm going to end up getting some dry spots and stripes. So you have to make sure that you keep the gun pointing straight down. So I'm going to do my 50-50 passes across the roof. I'm going to get stuck about right here. I'm going to go over, keep the gun down, continue that wet edge across to the other side. 
As soon as we're done putting our coat on the roof, I'm going to come back over here, focus on this front panel, and I'm going to just work my way around the car, panel by panel, coat by coat. Now at this point, we have four coats of electric lime green PDS on the car right now. We've got solid electric lime coverage. Now if on your project, you're just using PDS to get a standard matte finish. You would bring this up to about five or six coats, and then you would be done with the spraying portion of your project. On this project, we're going to be doing pearl coats using the DYC dip pearl top coat, and then high gloss coats on top of that. So at this point, we've gotten solid, foundation and durability and peelability with our four coats of PDS and we've got our solid color foundation for our pearls to go on top of. So it's time to mix up the iguana green pearls in the DYC dip pearl top coat. Now it's time for us to start mixing up our pearls. Now for this specific car I'm going to use about a gallon and a half of the DYC dip pearl top coat with 75 grams of the iguana green solid pearl. That'll put us at about a 50 gram per gallon ratio. Now remember, for solid pearls, you want to be at around 50 grams per gallon. For color shift pearls, you can go as high as 75 grams per gallon. Now that's not a lot of pearl for a car. This will give me only about two coats of pearl on this car, but what I'm using today is best case scenario. I've got an electric lime green looking pearl going over an electric lime green looking car, so I've got a, almost a perfect color match. When you're doing a color match, you don't need a lot of pearl. We should get full pearl coverage with a color match with just about two coats. If you're not doing a color match, say you've got something really contrasting like a gold pearl over a black base coat, if you're using like say pure gold alloy pearl, be prepared for maybe three, four, even five pearl coats. Now it's something very important. You obviously want to make sure you have enough product for your job. There's no need to guess anything. When you start building your product, you can always call in the customer service at Dip Your Car, tell them your car, your make, your model, your year, exactly the color that you want to achieve, and they will tell you exactly how much product and how much pearls you need. So again, we're doing a color matching pearl over a color matching base. Best case scenario, only need about two coats. So I'm going to start pouring those together and mixing it up right now. Now at this point in the project, we've got our two pearl coats done with the DYC dip pearl top coat. And because it was a very easy color matching pearl to base coat, we got solid pearl coverage in just those two coats. Now remember, if you're using a different type of pearl, more contrasting pearl over the base coat, expect to go way above two coats of pearl, possibly up to four 
or even five coats and make sure you have enough material for it. Now, if your project is just simply to have a nice, clean, satin pearl finish, this is where you end the spraying portion of your project. There's nothing else that needs to be done. We'll go into, or you know, skip ahead to, um, to the breakdown and, and the aftercare parts of the video. However, now we're gonna be applying the high gloss portion of the video. We're going for three coats of the DYC Dip Pearl Top Coat on top as the high gloss finish. Now, we made about a 30 minute video, DYC Dip Coat Tutorial, showing the ins and outs of how to spray this product, how not to spray this product. So when you get to this point in the video, if you want extra uh, guidance or advice on how to spray the DYC Top Coat, I'm not gonna go through the whole other 30 minutes here again. Watch that video when we're done here, and it'll give you all the tips and tricks on how to get a nice, clean gloss finish. So we're gonna go ahead and start dropping our three coats of gloss right now. Now we've given the car several hours to dry, it's time to talk about the aftercare, how to care for your dipped car after it's completed. Now you've spent time and money and energy on this and you want to keep it in the best condition possible for as long as you want your car to stay dipped. Remember, a dipped car can stay dipped in one application for over two years as long as it's maintained properly. And then at any time, you can peel it off and bring it back to your factory color or you can do another color potentially right on top, as long as the surface is nice and smooth. So, how do you take care of your dipped car? Well, first things first, how do you wash it? Well, you have two options here. The first is, you can go with what's proven and what's easy. The dip wash on dipyourcar.com is a very simple, very inexpensive uh, car washing uh, solution for dipped car surfaces. It works perfectly, it gets the, do the job done, and like I said, it's very inexpensive as well. Your other option is to go out and find other car wash solutions and see if they're compatible with dip. There are absolutely other car washes out there that will work with dip, but there are definitely ones that don't work with dip as well, that can have different type of materials or waxes in them that can always actually stain the car or ruin the finish. So if you wanna use something other than dip wash, just make sure that you do your testing in a small spot first before you try it on the car. The second thing, and one of the most important products that you can own if you have a dipped car is dip coat. This is by far our most popular accessory that we offer on dipyourcar.com. And dip coat does a lot of things for your dipped car, but it does two things exceptionally well. The first thing, as soon as you spray it on your dipped surface and wipe it in, you're gonna notice that it completely transforms the feel of the dip. With dip by itself, because it's a rubber type product, it's gonna have a little bit of a soft, grippy feel to it. It's gotten a lot better over the years and the DYC Dip Pro Top Coat helps that tremendously. But as soon as you put the dip coat on the car, it's gonna transform the feel. It's gonna make the car feel much harder and much slicker to the touch. As soon as your fingers slide over, it's gonna feel just like OEM car paint. The second thing it's gonna do is it's gonna help tremendously protect your dipped car from scratching and marring. So to apply the dip coat, it's very easy. You just moisten one side of a microfiber towel and then you give each panel, one panel at a time, a little mist of dip coat, you don't need a lot, and then you just wipe it on in. Now for a freshly dipped car, you should go panel by panel around the car 
dip coat the whole car, wait about 15 minutes, and then dip coat the car one more time. A fresh car right out of the gate should get two applications of dip coat on its first time. That helps build a nice foundation. And then you only have to do it again every week or two weeks whenever you give the car a really good washing. Dip coat, remember, is by far the most important thing that you can have if you're the owner of a dipped car. There isn't a single dipped car out there that should not have dip coat on it. All right, guys, I tried to walk you through all of the basic steps and processes when you're dipping your entire car from prepping the car, masking the car, being comfortable and knowledgeable about the equipment that's used, the spraying process and the aftercare. Now, of course, every project is, is unique. Every circumstance is different. So if there's anything that you need outside of what's covered in this video, if you have any questions, if you need any guidance, and of course, if you need to know uh, how much product you need or to get a product quote, email customer service at dipyourcar.com or call in anytime during business hours. We've got a ton of people there ready to walk you through the entire process. Now remember, this is essentially a removable car paint. You can use it on your wheels, your entire car, leave it on as long as you want. And when you're ready, it peels off nice and clean. You can go right back to your original color. So we're gonna let the camera go around so you guys can enjoy this beautifully bright Mustang. It's Fonzie, I'll see you in the next video.